Your After Effects preferences are under the After Effects title, After Effects preferences. I'm gonna go to memory and performance. I want you to change this on your home computers if you're running After Effects there as well. Right here under performance, it says enable multi-frame rendering. I want you all to click that off and then we're gonna click the okay button. You must turn off multi-frame rendering. It does not behave well in After Effects. Let's dive into particles. So it's gonna be the picture of the cloud, the green screen fire, the gladiolus, the water drop. I'm just gonna bring them in as individual files. Single composition. If you ever accidentally close your timeline, it's just window, timeline right there. That's how you open it back up. For particles, we're gonna go layer new, solid. Not a, not a shape, we just want a solid. Something flat with no pads. I'll call this particles. Color does not matter for this. Some people, when they get in the habit, they make the background black. Um, just that if they want to do any blending moves to knock something out, it automatically works. And in your effects, just start typing in the word particle and three of them will pop up. We're going to be doing particle world. It's the most complex, but I will touch on the other ones later on because it's very redundant. But each one can do one thing that particle world cannot. And the odds of you having to do that one thing are very rare. So that's why I don't really show those other ones. We're going to focus on particle world because it's the only 3D particle one in After Effects. So I'm just going to drag particle world on my particle solid, hit the space bar, and we've got particles. So what is a particle? Well, Harry Frank, who I told you to check out, he's the one that had the inertial bounce expression. Very talented motion graphic designer. He, he breaks it down saying particles they're born, they do something, and then they die in whatever amount of time you set it up for. There are third-party plugins you can get where the particles are infinite. They don't live or die, they're just always there. But in After Effects, they're born onto the scene, they do something, and then they die. Does everybody get that? So we're gonna dive deeper into that. So I've got my particle effect over here in my effects control. Everyone got their effects control? If not, this double white arrow can take you between project and effects controls. I'm going to twirl down my producer. Particles in After Effects are either born out of producers or cannons. So for like Particle Playground, it comes out of a cannon. But for Particle System 2 and Particle World, it comes out of producers. What's producing those particles? Make sense? You're all very bright. I knew you'd catch on to this very quickly. Particles can help you get complex motion and they're great for special effects as well. And the more complex you make your particle system, the longer it will take to render. So you've gotta be really careful when you're working with them. Some particle systems, like the more professional ones, they'll tell you how many particles are on the screen. They'll say like, hey, there's 5 million particles. And just doing minor changes will decrease the number of particles while still making it look good. You want to try and get the best looking particle system with the fewest amount of particles. If you need a million, you need a million. But if you can get by with a hundred, get by with a hundred. This is the golden rule of particles, no matter what you're using, After Effects or a third party plugin. Worry about the motion first, then dial in and get the look you want. It's a two part process motion then the final look all right and we'll explain what that means in a second i'm going to scroll down my physics engine let's pretend i wanted to make something look like a tornado under my physics engine under animation these are the preset physics engines in after effects i'm going to do twirly yeah now i'm going to try vortex instead and look at that that's more like what i want so you can quickly see what the particle system is doing, okay? Make sense? Now, the most important thing you can think of with particle systems right here under physics is resistance, okay? After Effects has very aggressive particle systems, and a lot of times you don't want that. You need something more subtle and refined. 
increasing the resistance will lower the strength of that particle system. And this is the beauty of doing particles. You can see it. You instantly see what all these complex terms mean. So if everyone could just look at the screen up here, I'm gonna hit the space bar. That's with no resistance. See how strong that is? I'm gonna crank the resistance up to 50. Look what's happening. Do you see how automatically it's not going as far? It's not going out as wide. It's more reduced. Same motion, just not going out as far, not going out as fast, not as severe. So once you see that, then you can dial back until you get more of the look that you want. Make sense? Resistance will usually be your fastest way of getting there. Just helps tone it down a little bit. Okay, well, I said a tornado and I promised a tornado. Motion, it's pretty much there, right? So we're gonna fine tune our motion. Physics is where your physics engine is. The velocity is how far out the particles shoot from the producer. Everyone see them going further and shorter and negative, they're going in a different direction. So just by scrubbing around, you can see what these settings do. I always go severe so I can see what it does. Then I dial it back to get the look I want. Inherent velocity, I don't really use that one that much. Gravity. Watch what happens when I increase the gravity. It's not going up as high. It's starting to come down. Gravity's what's gonna pull it downward, just like it does in real life. You increase it, it's gonna pull it down harder. Conversely, giving it negative gravity has a lighter than air quality. So if you want something like dust particles, that would be negative so that they float up. So it's really just thinking about it. Gravity, do I want it pulling down like raindrops? I would want those being pulled down to the ground. So that would be a positive gravity. Whereas the dust, negative gravity, floating up. Okay, extras. This is what's going to make your movement less uniform. You'll notice that when I tone it down, I've got more of a crosshatch look. But when I increase it, that crosshatch is going away and it's getting more random. And now it's less like the hurricane I wanted, tornado. So I just set my extra to zero, make it a little bit more uniform. Extra angle. If I increase that, now I'm getting even more rotation among my particles. I'm like, you know what? That's not half bad. I'll hold on to that. Sometimes when you need your particles to be straight, like if you're doing flowers in a field, things like that, setting your extra to zero and your extra angle to zero is critical. Not everything should randomly rotate. You're never gonna see trees just horizontally floating in the air. You know, you could make one tree, turn that tree into a custom particle and then create a forest off. Okay, we're gonna get into that. All right, so I dialed in my look. It's looking pretty decent. Now let's dial in the location. I don't want it up there. I want it more towards the ground. So it's touching down. Make sense? Physics was where we handled how far they're traveling out of the producer, how fast the type of motion. Producer is where we start dialing in the actual area that the particles are coming out of. So position X, Y, and Z is for moving up and down, side to side, or closer or further from the camera. So Y is my up and down. So I'm gonna put it about there. And now it's moving along the way that I want. All right, so position, X side to side. I think that'll do. Y up and down, Z closer or further from the camera. All right. This is how you can make like a, a gassy cloud field in outer space and push a camera through it. It's that Z depth to it that gives it. All right, so position is where it's gonna be. Up and down, side to side, closer, further from the camera. Now radius. This is how wide the producer is. So if I increase the X, it's wider side to side, or I could tighten it up to get the look that I want. Same thing with Y. How tall it's gonna be going in Z is how much it's going to and away from the camera. I'm gonna increase the Z a little bit because I want that volumetric look. I want it to have a little bit of puffiness to it. Let me try a little bit more Z, like such. 
So we've got that much down. Next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna look at the particle type. So we got the motion, now we're gonna dial on our look. And over here is particle. The default for this was line. There's a drop down menu, star. There's all different types of things like shaded sphere, fate, faded sphere, and you'll get different looks. Most of these you really don't use. What really is the bread and butter is down here. Textured square, textured disc, and texture faded disc, okay? Textured square, it's hard edges. We're gonna dial in the look of Brandon's roses being tossed on stage. I chose textured square for that because the rose, I didn't want it to have faded off edges. In real life, a rose wouldn't do that. So the textured square just gave it hard edges and it's a single rose in that. Think of it as a sheet of paper with the printout. You know, there's one rose on it. Make sense? That's what that one particle is doing. It's got hard edges, the image is inside, there's no blending, no softening. Textured disc is more of an elliptical shape with hard edges. I just went the rectangle because I didn't want to risk losing anything inside of it. Make sense? The last one, textured faded disc. This is what you use when you've got particles close together that you want to blend together. So if I'm making a tornado, I want texture faded disc so each cloud has soft edges and blends into the next one. If I'm going to be making a campfire, I would use this so the different flames blend together. It's when you need things to be more cohesive and blend seamlessly together that you use texture faded disc. Does that explanation make sense to everybody? All right, so hard edges, if you just want one object, I go with textured square, but when it's got to be blended together with things like fire or smoke, texture faded disc so you can blend them together more seamlessly. Click on instead texture faded disc and you'll still see nothing because that's the next step. So everyone sees nothing, right? The reason texture faded disc, textured square and textured disc are so powerful is once you choose one, and again, we chose texture faded disc, texture appears below it. That's where you're gonna choose what your custom particles, but before we do that, we're gonna create our custom particle. Now, when I was helping Brandon last week in lab time, we went through it quickly so I could show him, you know, hey, we can turn this flower into a heap of flowers being tossed onto your stage. When you're creating a custom particle, we're gonna go back to our project panel, and we're gonna want the new composition button down here next to the rocket ship, or you could go composition, new composition. Either one works, but I like clicking here. When you're making a custom particle, you want it to be between 200 by 200 pixels and a maximum of 400 by 400 pixels. That's if it's got a lot of detail, you want a larger one. Most of the time you can get away with smaller. So I'm going to click off lock aspect ratio and we've got 200 by 200. Uh, I'm gonna do 24 frames per second and I'll leave this up for a second so everyone can see it. If your setting, like say your composition is set to 24 frames, you want your particles to match that, okay? Also, duration. If this effect is gonna be on the screen for five seconds, you're gonna want your particles to be alive longer than five seconds. You know what I mean? So it's like you've got, if this cloud, say I only had it in for one second, well, after one second, go away. But if I want it for five seconds, I'd want the art to be at least five seconds long. That makes sense? So it's got something to reference every frame of the animation. When we dive into the video clip as a particle, that might be a different frame rate. Got it? And I'll show you how to find all that out. So for us tonight, 200 by 200, 24 frames, and I'm gonna go 10 seconds and then click OK. Oh, and we're gonna name this. I'll call it Cloud Particle and hit OK. Pros name the layers. And I probably misspelled it, but I'm not a spelling teacher. I teach motion design. And I also get by on my looks. All right, everyone good? I'm gonna grab my cloud. And you can see up here, whenever you click on something, it's got the size of it, the file type, and you know, the colors. That's why when I said for the, the fire clip, it's a smaller video clip and it is 60 frames per second. 
Can you see that right there? 60 frames. So don't worry about that because when we uh, use the fire particle, I'll show you how to do that. That's something special. All right, so I'm just gonna drag my cloud into my 200 by 200. Press S for scale. And this is the most important thing you're gonna hear me say all night, other than you're all impressing me this semester. When you're making a custom particle, you want it to fit completely within the size of your custom particle or else you're going to have hard edges. So I've got a little breathing room on each side of this. If you want a hard edge, you might. Well, then you're going to want it to hit that edge. Otherwise, give it some breathing room. I'm going to close that cloud particle and I'm back here. So here's my cloud particle up here in my project panel. I'm going to drag it into my timeline which I'm going to call main animation, just so there's no mistake. I'm going to hit enter to name it. This is where I'm going to put all my compositing into. When you're referencing a particle, a custom particle, click the eyeball icon to turn that off. It only needs to be in the scene you're putting it in, okay? As a reference, like when we're doing displacement maps. So you can turn the eyeball icon off and it'll still reference it. Does that make sense? We just put it there, it's in the scene. The eyeball for that layer is off. All right, so I'm gonna click back on my particle layer and go to my effects controls to access the particle effect because it's whatever layer you have selected, that's the effect that you'll be on. So here's my layer, there's my particles. We did texture faded disc and now we've got the particle uh, texture twirl down right here. Under texture layer, we say which one it is. That's why I name my layers to make it easier. Mine is layer number two, cloud particle. And under source, I'm going to do effects and mask, the little pull down right next to it. When I click on a layer, the particle layer, that's what has my effects. So by clicking on that layer and then being in my effects controls, that put me back in that effect. This double white arrow here. Okay, then what you would do is go window, effect controls, right down there. All right, now you're back up and running. No problem at all, it's what I'm here for. Stop me the second you have any questions. Like I said, we've got time, we've got padding built into this course. All right, now let's dive into our particle settings. So we did texture faded disc. We chose our custom particle, chose effects and mask. We're gonna leave scatter alone for now, okay? We'll dive into that in a second. Texture time, we're just gonna keep it set to current. First thing we're gonna talk about is birth size. Smoke usually gets bigger as it's, you know, sticking around. So that means I want a larger depth size so it's getting bigger as it's born, after it's born. And I'll give it a little bit bigger of a birth size. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's give it even a larger depth size, like such. So now we're starting to get somewhere, okay? That's the first step. The smoke gets bigger or the clouds are getting bigger as they're staying alive. I'm gonna make my birth size a little bit smaller, my death size a little bit bigger. All right, now size variation. I'm gonna crank that up to 100. If I did zero, it'd be uniform. 100, it's gonna randomize. So each cloud is a different size. Now this part, maximum opacity. I'm gonna set that to 100. Hurricanes and tornadoes are dense, okay? They've got all that dust and debris in them. You're not gonna see through them. So that's why I did maximum opacity 100. Now, if I was going for a gassy field in outer space, like, you know, like some big nebulous gassy space, I would decrease my maximum opacity. And now I've got more of a wisp or a steam or a foggy look. Everyone see how that works? So thinking about the opacity of your particles is important. How dense are they? I'm sticking with 100 for this. If this was a witch casting a spell and I wanted a witch casting a spell magical look, I might go from green to blue. So when they're born, they're green. When they're dying, they're blue. I've got something magical look, okay? But if you want to use the color of what you referenced, like Brandon drew his flower, we want those exact colors, 
if you want the exact color of what your art is, set your birth and your death to white and it will not change the color of the image over time. It will use the original source material. And now you can see the gray of my cloud. Right, this is the goofy thing that should not be hidden, but it is hidden. And by default, it should not. Right above our opacity, our, our color map is an opacity map, okay? I'm gonna twirl that down. What this means is it's fading on over time and fading off over time, kind of like our speed graph. I don't want this fading on or off. So the second I hover over that chart, that, that little graph grid right here, I get a pen. I can start drawing in and filling that in. So now it's not going to fade off or on. If I wanted to speed this up, like have it uh, move faster, I would probably go to my physics and the velocity, I'd increase the velocity I'd increase the inherent velocity a little bit. And uh, I would decrease the gravity, like so it's a negative, and I'd get rid of my resistance. Uh, let's see. I'd set that to zero. Now it's going much faster for me. How about you? I could also adjust the extra a little bit, get a little bit more twirl to it, see how that's twirling a little bit more. Exactly. Smaller numbers, slower. Yeah, keep the questions coming. Everyone good so far? We got our color. We got rid of the opacity. Another important setting, uh, custom color map if you want to do multiple colors over time. Like if I was doing a star field in, in outer space, I would use this. So part of it is blue. Part of it is a little bit yellow. Part of it is white. Part of it is red. You know what I mean? Because stars are different colors over their lifespan. I'm still not getting the volume shader. I don't know why it's not working anymore, but that's a great thing to have. Your transfer mode, when you're doing light effects like fire, you would want to change this to screen or add. But since we're doing something with density, we're going to keep it at composite. We're going to get to screen and add once we do the fire. Does this look like a tornado at the moment or a hurricane? I need more. That's where you've got longevity and birth rate. I'm going to make these live longer. And then I'm going to increase the number of particles being born. And look what's happening. What if they live shorter? Let's see what that's going to look like. I decrease that even more. So don't forget, as they die, they get larger. So since I have them living a shorter amount of time, look at how much thicker this smoke screen guy. So I'm going to decrease my resolution. Now that it's thicker, I can lower my particle count. Like such, okay? Up at the top right here is where you've got your birth rate and your longevity. Oh, my particle count, that's birth rate. Yeah, birth rate is basically how many particles are being born No problem. Okay, so this is what we've got. In this class, we say, hey, that's our first idea. Now let's push it, because that's what the pros do. You can use a video clip as a custom particle. You can use a still image. You could use text. You could use whatever you want, okay? Now watch this. I'm going to double click to reopen my custom particle. We just have this boring still image. Well, let's throw turbulent displace on it. And we know if we're feeling lazy, we could add the time expression to evolution. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key while I left click on that. Time, asterisk, uh, let's say 100. And then we'll click out of it. Now we've got some life happening to that, okay? So I'm going to increase the size of that and I'll try twist. So this is happening, okay? So let's increase the thing down a little bit. And then I'm going to hop back to my main animation and it's going to update what my particle looks like. So I'm going to get a completely different, more organic look here. So I'm going to crank up full. Uh, I did time asterisk 100. So watch what's going to happen here. 
take a look at this. I've got this nice wispiness happening off to the sides because of the particle being animated. Like right here, we threw that effect on it. The turbulent displays, okay? So watch, watch what's gonna happen. See these nice wisps and all that stuff happening? Watch what happens if I hide this effect. And it's gonna rethink because it's gotta redo. And look, all those nice wisps are gone. Just doing that little thing, having the particle have a little bit of life, completely gives you a different look. Like you could have bubbles undulating, like wobbling, and then it'll look more realistic. Those little subtle details is what's gonna push your work and make you stand out in the job market, okay? So yeah, you can have a still image. You could have an animated image. You could put an expression on it. Whatever you can think of can be a particle. A particle is something that is born, lives for a certain amount of time, does something, and then it goes off the screen. Make sense? That's what a particle is. Particle systems, just spread those particles out in whatever way you choose. There's a couple of them in After Effects, they're pretty decent, and then there's third-party plugins that you could pay for. So there's also a free one. If you go to Boris FX, FX, there's Particle Illusion. This is a free particle engine that is very powerful. If you do download this for yourself at home, you just uh, set up an account, but there's two things you need with it. You need to download the particle system and then the particle engines. So it's two different things you gotta do. Yeah, the models and the emitters. There's two different things to download, they're both free. And they've got a very deep library. They've got fluid dynamics. You can have deflectors. You can't do half this stuff in After Effects. The only problem with the free version is you cannot composite it into a scene. So it's like, if I had a waterfall and I wanted it to look like water was bouncing off a rock in the scene, well, I can't see where that rock is. You know, so you can create particles in it, but you can't use it for compositing it into another scene. You'd have to blindly do that. So that's an example of a very free, powerful particle engine if you get in inspired to do more particles. We've got this first thing we learned about that. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm feeling lazy, I'm gonna put this right inside our custom particle thing and hide the original one, all right? I'm just gonna shrink it down because this way I don't have to make something new, all right? So that means this will automatically refresh the particle engine. Yeah, <laughs> it's a gift. Okay, so let me go back a little bit. And what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna make these particles live longer. So I'm gonna increase the longevity and I'm gonna make them larger just so you can see what's happening here. Uh, so it's under particle, birth size, I'm gonna make larger. And the death size, I'm gonna make smaller. I'm gonna have them be the same size. So I'll do two and two. Let's see what that gets us, all right. I'm gonna decrease these. Oh, and also take a look. Can everybody see texture faded disc, how it got soft edges? Change it to square, boom, hard edges, all right? Uh, you know what? You're not allowed to ask questions for the rest of the night. <laughs> See what Textured Disk did? It changed the way they were facing. Okay. So Textured Disk will keep the hard edges, but they won't all be in the same direction. That might be what you want. You know what I mean? So if that's what you want, go for it. Now, I told you I'd get back to Scatter. Is everybody ready for this? You will not like what Scatter does. It's creepy. Here we go, you ready? Watch what happens when I increase the scatter. Scatter is changing where the particle is inside it's holding. So we chose textured square. You can clearly see the squares now. And we're getting the psychedelic effect because we're spreading it out inside that square that's being animated. Yeah, so now you can see Oh, I didn't notice that square before. But once I increase the scatter, 
Now you can see the square. Now you see what scatter does. I never use scatter for anything unless I want to give someone a nightmare. And now we know if I choose textured disk instead of textured square, we've got the hard edges, but they're randomly rotated inside. And let's check our rotation spread. See, this is directly influencing it more, as well as the initial rotation. This fire was shot at 60 frames per sec. So if we put it in the composition that was 24 frames per second, the motion's gonna be weird. If you're lazy and you don't wanna look up here and study everything that made the video clip up, you know, all its aspect ratio and all that, all you do, you grab your video clip, drag it onto the new comp button, and it will automatically be the right size, the right duration, the right frame rate, everything's going to be set up for you okay you just grab your video clip and drag it onto the new comp button and it'll create that for you or you could right click and choose new comp from selection and in here we have to hold down the control key for that to work we've got our fire in here right first thing we got to do is remove the green screen so i'm going to type in key for key light and it doesn't have to be a green screen video effect it can be anything you know, but we're doing green screen because we're, you know, we always push our ideas. So I put key light on my fire video clip. So the eyedropper by screen color, I click once on the eyedropper, click on the eyedropper, click on green, and then the green disappears. So I've got my isolated fire. That's step one. I'm going to pre-compose this inside that pre-comp, right? So I'm going to right click, pre-compose, and I'll call this Fire PC2. And I'm going to move all attributes into a new composition. I'm going to double click to open it. So now I'm in my Fire PC2 pre comp. This is where I'm going to change the composition thing. So I'm going Composition, Composition Settings, 200 by 200. And I'm going to want my duration to be 10 seconds. So I'm going to change it to 10 seconds here. Zoom out. And as you can see, my video clip is one, it's too big for the custom particle size, and two, it's not long enough to fill the timeline, okay? So we're gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna scale it down. I hit the S key, scale it down so it fits completely inside. And that's the first step. All right, so I hit S for scale, and I scaled it down until it completely fit inside the custom particle. Every edge. I don't want it to leave the custom particle. Oh, you moved it over. Yeah, so I made a new one. All right, you good? Okay, so it fits in our custom particle, but it's not long enough. We need to be at least 10 seconds. So I just hit Command D to duplicate it, hold down Shift, it'll snap to there. I'm going to duplicate it again, Command D, hold down Shift, it'll snap to that edge. Command D again, hold down Shift, it'll snap to that edge. Last one, Command D, hold down Shift, and now we've got 10 seconds of fire to use as a custom particle. Everyone see how that worked? Are you good, Chris? All right. So that's Fire PC2. Each one of these already has the green screen removed, okay? So I'm back at my main animation. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to completely fill the 10 second timeline. Yeah, okay. Yes, so the important thing to remember is I call that one Fire PC2. That's mine. It's green screen removed, it's shrunk, and it's in there. Okay, so here's main animation. I'm gonna hide my first particle layer. I'm gonna create another one. I'm gonna go layer, new, solid, and I'll call this particle fire. And I'm gonna keep all my settings, hit okay. And we're here. Again, I'm gonna put particle world on that layer and stop there. Save. Everyone good? 
solid. Yep, new, new solid, called it particle fire, and I put CC particle world onto it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my uh, physics, and this time I'm gonna choose fire. Hit the space bar, okay? This is kind of what we want. So first rule, get the motion looking right. Second rule, make it look the way you want it to. Okay, so we're gonna worry about the motion first. Now for this, I'm gonna increase the resistance so that it doesn't go too far away. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm also gonna twirl down my producer and start positioning it now. I'm gonna put it on the ground. Let's say about there, we'll pretend there's a campfire. Now the radius, how wide do I want my fire to be? How big do I want it to get? and how much Z space. I don't want to take up too much Z space because I don't want it to be a very thick fire. So now I'm just gonna reposition this to where I want it to be. And that's looking okay. So I'm happy with that. Let me know when you're all happy with the rough look of your fire. Here's the changes I made. I only changed you know what, I might actually even have the velocity tone that down a little bit so it doesn't travel out too far. That's a little bit better. Gravity, what's gonna happen if I pull the gravity down a little bit? I'm just gonna play around, lower my gravity. Uh, is that resistant? Yeah, I'm gonna up that resistance. Let's increase the extra. I'm a little bit happier with that. No, nah, that's too much extra. That's way too much extra. That's a little bit better. Let's up the extra a little bit, just for some interest. There we go. I like that. All right. Is that going down? My fire is going down. Is your gravity at like 0.3 or is it at a negative? If you do negative, then it's going to go downward. So you want it to be in a positive so it floats up. Okay, well, it's a positive. Okay, is it going up? Okay. So let's dive in with our custom particle because we basically got the motion. So I twirl down particle. We're going to want a texture faded disc so that we can blend it smoothly together from clip to clip. Okay? Second you choose that, you gotta say, well, what's the texture? I've gotta hop back to my particle system. I want fire PC2. I'm gonna drag that into my timeline, click the eyeball to hide it, and then click back on my particle layer and go back to my effects. So now in my texture, my texture layer, I can choose fire PC2. I'm gonna choose source effects and mask. Now I can start to fine tune it. Maximum opacity, I mean the opacity map, I don't want it to fade off or on. My maximum opacity I'll set to 100. Size variation I'll set to 100. Now fire, I'll have it get a little bigger as it dies. And I'll have it start a little bigger. So I increased the birth size and the death size. Okay, I want to use the actual video clip, so I'm going to change the color of the birth and the death to white. And for my transfer mode in the particle, I'm going to choose screen, and that's going to blend them together. Now, if I chose add, each bit of brightness would add on top of each other, getting brighter and brighter, the more they layer onto one another. So I'm just showing you the difference between add and screen. Add is more realistic. When you look at the center of a fire, you can't see through it. These subtle little differences are what's gonna make your work more believable and professional. If you're filming fire, a lot of it, sometimes it gets overexposed. You don't always have everything in exposure. You're not gonna see the whole picture, so I'm cool with that. Now, let's take a look at texture time. 
I'm going to choose from birth and look at that. My flames instantly change because this is saying each particle is going to start off at the beginning of that video clip. That's what at birth looks like. I could say from start. That's going to be from the start of the video clip. I'll get that type of look, but I like the way it looked at birth. Current will give me a different look as well, like that. I'm going to do birth just for something different. Everyone with me so far? All right. So my birth rate, I'm going to increase that to fill it up like a firewood. And let's increase the longevity. Let's see what that's going to That's a little bit better once it all gets started. So now I can start saying, well, if this is too intense, I can go back to my particle and lower my maximum opacity. Like that. Okay. Reel it back in a little bit. Because there were so many of them, they kept layering and layering and getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Now I can also start saying, what if I didn't have them get so big as they were dying and I kept them, what if they got smaller? Now we've got different looking fire. That's looking a little bit better, actually, in my opinion. So this is where you can start tweaking it and getting the look and feel that you want. Okay. We're almost done the lecture, so I'm going to do one more thing. Since this fire was pre-composed and the green screen was removed, if you try to just throw a green screen clip into your particle system, you'll have green in with it. So that's why I had to pre-compose it once it was the green screen. So I'm going to, let's put our Krispy Kreme face back in here. I'll scale back up. Okay. Now check this out, you ready? I've got my fire. I'm going to duplicate this, Command D, so it's duplicated, all right? I'm going to throw hue saturation on it, desaturate it. Who can guess where this is going? I'm gonna make it a displacement map. So I'm gonna pre-compose this, call it displacement map, hit move all attributes. Now we've got our grayscale image. I can hide that. Now I can go to my Krispy Kreme face, throw a displacement map onto it, and choose the map that we got from our fire. Vex mask. See how much we want it to displace from. To go upward because the flames are going upward. Now we've got some heat being kicked off by the fire, like you'd see in real life. You could just adjust it for however extreme. Yeah. yeah. So if I want, I could hide that effect. And you'll see the displacement from the heat of it. So I'll turn the fire back on. One more thing I want you to think on. You will usually need more than one particle system lighter. Well, I've got this fire, cool. I duplicated it. I used it as a displacement map because the heat it's kicking off. But where there's fire, there's usually smoke. So I'd create another particle system, set that one up to be my smoke. If I want to get really technical, I could make a third party particle system. That could be the embers coming off of the fire. So you can use different artwork and different particle systems to sell it all together into one composited idea. Everyone good with that? Just remember, you can't have more than one custom particle in that particle system. So that's why we need another system for the smoke because we're gonna use a cloud. Each particle system is doing one thing. Uh, 
let's pretend I was doing a cereal commercial and it's like a Fruit Loops. There's a red piece of cereal, a blue piece of cereal, yellow, green. I would create four different colors of the cereal, make four different particle systems and reference each one of those pieces of cereal. So I've got four different colors of cereal in four different particle systems. Make sense? All right. Well, that's just the intro to particle systems custom particles and starting to think your way through working with them. And as you can see, you can get some pretty interesting stuff quickly with it. And I'm saying that vertical displacement is too dramatic. Tone it down a little bit. There we go. Ta-da. All right, now lab time. 